Beauty School Drop-In, hosted by your favorite beauty school dropout, Brooke Johnson. This podcast is the story of how I dropped out of cosmetology school only to return four years later in order to finish my degree and fulfill my passion for the beauty industry. This is a one-stop shop for everything you've ever wanted to know about pursuing a career in cosmetology. I'll be sharing career tips, industry news, and we'll chat with other industry experts along the way. So take a seat in my chair and get ready to transform into a beauty professional. So welcome everyone to the first ever episode of Beauty School Drop-In. I'm your host, Brooke, and I imagine you are here listening because you are someone who is interested in the pursuit of the cosmetology industry. You might be contemplating whether it's right for you at this moment. Like me, you might find yourself in the midst of your education. Maybe you're actually a seasoned professional, or maybe you're here because you're just curious. Wherever you are and whatever your intention, thanks so much for tuning in to the very first episode of Beauty School Drop-In. Today, I'm going to explore how you can tell if a career in the beauty industry is right for you. I'm going to start by sharing my personal story, and then I want to share four pieces of career advice for anyone who thinks they might want to attend cosmetology school or pursue a career as a hairstylist. I have always found it interesting that some people seem to get inspired at a very young age to pursue their chosen profession. Because when I was a kid, never did I one time have the thought, you know what, when I grow up, I want to be a hairstylist. In all honesty, I don't think I ever really thought about what I was going to be when I grew up, and I don't really think I realized that I was actually going to grow up. Um, which sounds really funny, but I was just much more focused on having fun when I was a kid. I was very tactile and creative. I was very big on imaginative play, and that was really all I ever wanted to do. I just wanted to play and have fun. Um, So by the time 2008 rolled around and I was graduating from high school and I was going to get ready to enroll in college and choose a career path, I still had no clue what I actually wanted to be when I grew up or what I wanted to do with my life. The only thing I could actually come up with at that time was to pursue a career in fashion merchandising because I had looked at a course catalog for some of the colleges I was thinking of going to and the classes that you got to take for that particular degree really appealed to me. I remember there were specifically a lot of art history or, you know, fashion history classes, and all I really wanted to do was learn all about that um, because that was something I was super interested in. I had Vogue's. I was into all the runway shows. I knew all the designers, all of that kind of stuff. But as many of you guys listening might remember about 2008, the U.S. economy had totally tanked, it had crashed, and we were not looking so good financially. So having been a very mediocre student and having no scholarships or, you know, full rides tuition-wise to college, the only place that my family could afford to send me was going to be our local university. Thankfully, it is a good university. However, they had zero of the degrees or creative endeavors that I wanted to pursue. Um, So I was just going to enroll in that college. You have to take your core classes for the first little bit of your college career anyway, so figured I'll just do that. So college sort of started out on a sour note for me, and to be fair, two semesters in, things were not looking any better. I was going, but there was this increasing pressure from my advisors to declare a major because that was going to shape the rest of my college career. Um, And at that time, I still had no idea what I would actually declare if I had to, so I talked to my parents about it, and I just decided that I needed to take a break and figure things out, and so I dropped out of college for the time being. So over my semester off, I was basically spending all my time working, and I really wasn't thinking that much about what am I actually going to do, am I going to go back to college, or anything like it, but during that time, my twin sister had decided that she was going to go back to school in the fall and pursue a degree in graphic design at our local technical college. And because I had nothing else up my sleeve, I thought, you know, that sounds good because at the time, graphic designer was a pretty decent job. It was really becoming a trend, I remember. And you kind of knew since everything was going to be digital and moving forward that way that you would always have work. And since I was a creative person, visually speaking, I thought that that was going to be a good good idea for me. Um, So I enrolled along with her. 
But I will tell you, it didn't take me long at all to realize that a degree in graphic design was so not going to float my boat. It was not my life calling. I did feel like I needed to stick it out, kind of a sense of duty because my parents were helping me pay for it and it was an affordable option at the time. So I ended up graduating with an associate's degree in graphic design. But more notably, this was the time of my life when I first became aware that my technical college had a cosmetology program, a whole department. And suddenly I found myself thinking, you know, I don't really like graphic design, but you know what sounds really fun? That cosmetology department over there. It seems like a place that I would like to be. And I could really see myself getting along in that industry. It kind of goes in line with all the things I like. But even in realizing that, obviously, I didn't take the plunge at that time. This time frame that I was in school pursuing this graphic design degree also happens to be when One Direction had captivated the world and that was not lost on me. I was completely obsessed with them. Um, I had a major crush on Harry Styles, but the person who I actually was most interested in in that whole situation was their hairstylist, Lou Teasdale. And I would look at her and just think, first of all, she's so cool, but also, wow, she has what I perceive to be my dream job. She is traveling the world with this band. She just does the five boys hair every night, and she gets to see the world at the same time, and basically, she's just getting paid to have fun. That's all I could think about. I was like, wow, she has the best job in the world because it really encapsulated all the things that I thought I would enjoy doing. So doing someone's hair, beautification type stuff like that, love it. You know, traveling the world, love that idea. Getting paid to do all the things I really like, great, perfect, sign me up. Um, So I had started to really look into her life and where she had come from and how she got to that place. I discovered a lot about her, including that she was a twin like me, which I think even made me more interested in her. But even in doing that research and really discovering the industry for myself, it still took me a couple more years to finally decide that I was going to enroll in school. But in 2016, I finally bit the bullet and I enrolled in cosmetology school. So I was attending classes in addition to working a full-time job at a coffee shop. And without going into great detail about that situation, I just want to tell you a few facts about my life during that phase. So at that time, I was very, very depressed. I was under a lot of financial strain and I had a lot of pressure on me at work to keep advancing with the company. Um, So because I really needed the money, Uh, When cosmetology school ended up being a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, I basically just caved and I dropped out and started climbing the corporate ladder at the coffee shop, thus becoming a beauty school dropout at the ripe old age of 26. I'm not going to lie to you guys, when I first attended cosmetology school at 26 years old, I think I really only was doing it because I was feeling so lost in my life and I wanted to find a way out of my circumstances. I was definitely interested in the industry, but I had this major imposter syndrome because there were all these other students. I must have had a class of like 30 other people, and all of them, most of them at least, were probably eight years younger than me and seemed to be way better at doing hair than I was. In fact, I just remember thinking, how do you guys know how so much about this? Like, am I missing a gene in my brain that doesn't allow me to like just have every single part of this come naturally to me because it's something I'm very interested in. And this is going to seem a little bit off topic, but another fact of my life was that I have struggled with eczema a lot in my life. And because of the chemicals that I was using every single day at my job, my hands were raw, they were itchy, they were scabbed over, they were scaly, and they were so in pain that doing hair became even harder for me. And I felt so self-conscious because not only is the cosmetology industry obviously a very image-based industry, but it's just your hands are your actual tools and everyone's going to see them. So I was so embarrassed to actually have to use my hands to do hair. Um, So that fact kind of coupled with this increasing pressure from my boss and my extreme need for money ended up really being the driving forces in why I actually quit. And you know, hindsight is 2020. I wish I had stayed the course, but I will say that I learned so much 
um, so many things between then and now that I needed to learn in order to succeed, um, not only in cosmetology school, but just in life. So even though I wish I could tell you guys that, yeah, I've been in the industry for four whole years and it's going great, I haven't. And I also know that I wouldn't be where I am right now if I hadn't experienced all of that stuff and quit those four years ago, almost five years now. So to make a long story short, I did end up climbing that corporate ladder, but eventually that job became so demanding, I had zero healthy boundaries. I had zero boundaries at all with that job, and I could not take the pressure. It was absolutely killing me. So I ended up quitting just before 2020, and the unforeseeable COVID-19 pandemic did not think that was going to happen. So fast forward to quarantine, which is a time that's clearly still very fresh on a lot of our minds. I had a few solid months during that time frame where I wasn't totally desperate for money and I was able to really evaluate my life and what move I needed to make next so that I didn't end up unhappy and needing to quit my job all over again. Truth be told, I had a lot of emotional and mental issues to overcome. Those things had really been compounding over the course of my adult life And I had never really stopped to try to actually address any of these issues I was having. And on top of that, my career had really brought out this side of me that I no longer recognized and I absolutely hated. I hated who I had actually become. So during that section of quarantine, that very beginning part, I kind of call it my soul searching season. When I was looking for a new job opportunity, but I was also spending a lot of time working on my actual mental health, reading some books, and working through some of my own personal trauma. Um, So it was during that time that I actually had conversations with two of my sisters, and totally separate from each other, neither of them had spoken to each other about this. They sat down and they asked me, why did you actually quit cosmetology four years ago? Like, I don't really understand that because when you were doing that, you seemed so happy and that was totally the perfect job for you. And honestly, nothing's changed. I feel like you still really like that, don't you? And also that still seems to me like it would be the perfect job for you. So they were both kind of convincing me that that was actually my true calling and they never understood why I quit. So I went home and I got to thinking about what they had said to me and I realized not only has my passion for this industry never gone away, I think I've actually looked into it more, researched more about it and learned more about it in the last four years than I ever did, you know, my last time around the block with it. So I realized then and there that I needed to seize this super rare opportunity that COVID had kind of presented me with and head back to school, finish my degree and totally relaunch myself into a career that made more sense for me. So that is exactly what I did. That was kind of the abridged version of how I got to where I am right now and what brings me to this podcast today. Um, I am currently enrolled in a cosmetology program at my um, local technical college, the same one that I obtained my graphic design degree from. And I have roughly nine months until I will be taking my state board and getting my license. So now that I have told you the abridged version of my story, coming up next, I am going to share four pieces of advice for anyone who thinks they may be interested in following this career path. All right, so it is time to dish out some good advice. Now, I'd love to sit here and tell you that if I had been sat down, you know, 12 years ago by someone and they told me the things I'm about to tell you, I would have taken that advice. But as we all know, experience truly is the best teacher and some of us are just too stubborn. But regardless, I hope you guys are going to find something that you can relate to here or even in the story that I told you earlier, my personal journey, because we all have something that has brought us to this point. If you clicked play on this podcast because you just asked your Magic 8 Ball, should I attend cosmetology school, then the Magic 8 Ball wants me to give you the message right now, yes, duh, of course, obviously you need to attend cosmetology school. How do I know that? Well, besides the fact that the Magic 8 Ball told me, um, the fact that you're actually here listening to this is totally proof enough. And you might say, well, that's not proof enough for me. How am I actually going to succeed in this industry? Can I truly succeed? Will there be work for me? And a million questions like that. And if that's the question you're asking, then here's some of the advice I just want to give you. 
First things first, this is really important to highlight. Just because you are not a highly creative individual or you weren't a highly creative child, you weren't the friend that volunteered to do everyone's hair and makeup for the eighth grade dance or the senior prom, does not mean that you can't be a cosmetologist. I want you guys to think of this more objectively. The fact is, Cosmetology, cutting hair, doing nails, applying makeup, or any other job that you can have under the beauty umbrella is a skill that can be learned and someone can actually teach you how to do these things. That doesn't mean that you're going to be great at it the first time you try. It doesn't even mean you're going to be great the 10th time you try. It just means that you can learn and if you are persistent and you practice a lot, you're going to be able to eventually really hone those skills and perfect your craft. You know, I have to share this because I think it's also something very important to to know is that most people who sit down in your chair are not going to be looking for you to reinvent the wheel. They don't want a haircut that is totally original that no one's ever seen before. What they're going to be happy with is if they can sit down in your chair, show you a picture of long layers, and then you can give them a long layered haircut because let's be honest, that's what most of the people are asking for these days anyway. They just want to know that they can trust you to give them a good haircut and see them on their way. The second piece of advice that I have to give is something that's a little bit more vulnerable and personal, but it's something that I want to talk about because I alluded to it in my story earlier where I told you guys, you know, I struggled a lot with mental health. Um, I struggled for so much of my adult life and because I was struggling so much and not really addressing it and because my mindset was so, you know, literally effed up, um, I was just the most wishy-washy and indecisive person who could not make a choice by myself if I needed to save my life. So every time I wanted to make a decision or do something different, I would seek out the advice of those people around me who I trusted. And even though I trusted those people, None of them ever advised me to do what I actually wanted to do with my life because, to be fair, I wasn't even being honest with myself about what I wanted from life, which was that I knew I wanted to be a cosmetology student and pursue that career. For example, my mom wasn't thrilled with me pursuing cosmetology school. Um, She thought that it was going to be much better for me to climb the corporate ladder and achieve financial security, and she wanted me to have benefits and be able to retire with a 401k, you know, that kind of a thing, because that was you know, what she knew was valuable in a job. And she wasn't trying to be mean or sabotage my dreams, but because I was so lost, I was more than willing to take her advice over my own because I didn't even trust my own instincts. And ultimately, because I couldn't trust myself or say what I really wanted, I let that hold me back time and time again. But I want to tell you guys right now, if you're in that same kind of position where your mental health is struggling and you're not clear on what you want to do or you just don't know how to be honest with people about it and yourself, just start getting honest with yourself. Don't do what I did and let time pass you by where you don't do something that you really love and you want to pursue. Um, The only way to combat this is to start to know and understand what you believe and what you want out of life. So you need to work on getting clear about those things. Um, In order to do that, it would be a really good idea to write this down somewhere. Just make yourself a little list of things that you really want in your life. And then once you have them written down, meditate on it, pray about it, think about it, and give yourself some time. Don't think that you're going to find the answer overnight. You're going to need to kind of dwell on it maybe for just a couple weeks or a couple days, some of us, and then some of us might need a few months. But obviously, eventually, you're going to want to act on that. So during that time when you're really processing it, pay attention to patterns because right now I could pull out all my journals from that time of my life and over and over again, I guarantee you, I wrote down somewhere, I want to be a hairstylist. I want to do travel the world being a hairstylist. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the answer that I was looking for the whole time will not have changed. It will have been the same. So look for that pattern and just start getting really clear with yourself The whole thing is that if you don't choose what you want from life, life is going to choose for you, and I really don't think you're going to be happy with the result. I know that I wasn't. Okay, that leads me into my third piece of advice, which is if you know you're interested in the beauty industry, I would encourage you at this moment to identify someone within the industry who seems to have a career you want to have as well, 
and find out from them by sending them a DM or um, maybe just researching them how they got to where they are because I guarantee you they would love to share their story. Personally, I'm kind of obsessed with pop culture. As we know earlier, I told you guys one of the things that really set me on the path of knowing I wanted to be a hairstylist is when I discovered Lou Teasdale and she was so cool looking into her life. Um, But I realized that Um, when I was doing that then, that's something that I've always done. And people who I've always been kind of obsessed with or admired and looked up to were always in a creative industry. For example, I've always been obsessed with Yves Saint Laurent, reading his biographies and all the stuff about him. Um, I'm always obsessed with Anna Wintour, Pat McGrath, just to name a few. And these are people who are very prominent, obviously. But you're idol or the person that you really look up to and admire doesn't have to be someone of celebrity. It can be the person in your town who owns her salon and also gives the best balayage in the world because heroes are all around us. So you just have to look around and try to get some inspiration. I think one of the reasons that it's so important to kind of find someone like that is just because it helps you to clarify what you're actually trying to do because this beauty industry is so vast and new opportunities and jobs come up every single day. So just because you're going to cosmetology school doesn't mean that you're actually just going to be a hairstylist. You know, this is just a gateway to doing so many other things and it's just good to start understanding what all is out there. My final piece of advice for this particular video is try to get a job within the industry as early as you can in your journey. So right now, if you're interested, even if you don't have a license or you're not even really sure that you wanna go to cosmetology school, Go ahead and try to find a job. You could maybe do a job as a receptionist or something like that, even working at Ulta or Sephora where they sell hair care and makeup products. That'll teach you a lot about the beauty industry Um, because not only are you going to learn a lot within that realm, but it will teach you what you do and don't like about the industry. It's going to help you clarify your own goals and some things that you might want to do in the future. And it will help you just understand whether or not you even need a degree to get where you want to go. To sprinkle a little bit more of my personal story in there with this one, when I finally decided, you know, this past year to go back to cosmetology school, the first thing that I did, because school wasn't going to start till the fall and I had some time that summer, was to go and seek out a job in a salon. And so I became a receptionist at a salon that I ended up quitting because the environment truly was too toxic and I just realized, you know, it wasn't the right decision for me at the time. But if that happens to you, don't be discouraged because I'll be honest, I think that it takes us a while to find the right fit when we're cosmetologists. You have to find an environment that works with your personality and who you are and the things that you value. And I think the larger point that I really want to make is that what I learned from that experience was that Just because I'm finding a job in my chosen field does not mean that it's going to be the perfect fit for me and I may need to shop around a little harder before I settle anywhere. Don't be afraid if you find yourself having to work in a couple of different salons or under a couple of different stylists before you kind of find your niche in your way. It's going to happen. And you know, remember earlier when I was telling you guys about the eczema on my hands and that was directly caused from the job that that I had at the coffee shop at the time. Literally, the chemicals we used to wash dishes were causing my hands to be totally ruined. And I remember thinking at the time, well, I guess I just have to accept my fate. My hands are always going to be like this. I'm always going to have to work here. And this is just my lot in life, so I better get used to it. And that's totally the wrong mindset to have. Really, When my hand started having that problem originally, I probably should have taken it then and there as the most literal sign in the world that that was not the right situation for me anymore and that I needed to move on and find something else where I wasn't, you know, physically hurting my body and having this very toxic situation, so to speak. If I had never decided that enough is enough and had everything else compounding on top of it, I would have never left that job and I would have never gotten here 
to the place of kind of clarity and excitement that I am right now being able to pursue something that I really love. So don't be afraid to kind of cut the ties when things get a little bit toxic or weird and just find the opportunity that's right for you. Um, Don't get discouraged because you're going to have a mix of experiences, but hopefully you're going to end up somewhere that you really enjoy. So let's sum this up really quick. Magic 8-Ball says yes. You do need to pursue a career in cosmetology. Um, I truly believe that you should if you're here and you're wondering about that because you just have nothing to lose. You're going to try it and probably you're going to end up loving it or finding something within the realm that you do love. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about how to choose a cosmetology school that is right for you. So I'm going to be going over the logistics of it, the costs of it, the true cost of it, and I'm also going to be sharing a list of questions that you guys can use when you're shopping around at schools to kind of clarify whether or not it's the right fit for you. But in the meantime, I would definitely love to hear from you guys. So if you have a question that pertains to choosing a cosmetology school or really anything else that we could cover in the future, then go ahead and drop me an email at brooksbeautybazaar at gmail.com. Whether you're watching here on YouTube, I'm looking at you, hello, I'm waving, or you're listening on Spotify, there is going to be a link below for you to submit your questions. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to try to select some of those to answer in that upcoming episode and future episodes as well. If you guys want to check out more things from me, I do have an entire YouTube channel called Brooks Beauty Bazaar where you can not only watch a video version of this podcast episode, but you can also check out my skincare and makeup related videos. Don't forget to follow along with me at Brooks Beauty Bazaar on Instagram or check out my blog, brooksbeautybazaar.com. I can't wait to hear from you guys. I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you in the next episode.